Hello and welcome to Coding Game Fall Challenge 2023. So, um, Advent of Code is over. Uh, DIJ, yes, actually, I did. I did finish AOC, and I finished it on Christmas Day as well. the The morning, the morning of day twenty five, I finished off day twenty one, with only like half an hour, like twenty minutes to spare, so that I could actually do twenty five and, and finish it all. So <laughs> it was it was an ordeal. Some of those last problems took me like three to four hours, and a couple of them took me five to six hours. Day 21 and day 24 took about six hours each. Bloody hell. But um, yeah, day 25 was fine. Took me about an hour and a half. Uh, so yeah, that's that's done with, out of the way. Now I can get on to this. This, is, this competition has already been out about a week, over a week, like 10 days. Fortunately, they made it three weeks long. Not two week, two weeks long, so I have a bit of time if I'm starting late because um, I mean I imagine they're aware, you know, the advent of code is kind of now one of the most popular alternative coding sites, so they, you know, they don't want to completely overlap on on the on the schedule, otherwise <laughs> people won't be able to attend. All right, so. Fall Challenge 2023. So this one is, this, this whole site is more AI oriented. So it's less about, um, textbook algorithms. Well, yeah, yeah. Less about algorithms and data structures. Although we will be using algorithms and data structures. It's more about AI techniques. Uh, often, often it can come down to just if else conditions, not using any fancy methods or anything, just just to tell the AI what to do. Some smart heuristics, smart decisions. Um, sometimes you want to pathfinding plays a big role. Uh, finite state machines. Most people don't use ML machine learning, but you can, and it has. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's just too much overhead, it depends. All right, let's start this. So, these are the leagues. So gold isn't even open yet, all right. We start in the bottom of wood league. There's three wood leagues, and then there's one bronze league, silver league, gold league, legend league. So, seabed security. So usually they base the theme of these games on some recent video game or movie. Nowadays it's more video games. In the in the old days it used to be based on movies, but I think they've moved towards video games. I'm guessing this is what based on Dave the Diver because that was one of the popular games recently. It's not going to be like Subnautica or anything. No. Yeah, it's probably Dave the Diver. I've never, I, I don't know much about David Diver, but I believe you collect stuff and sell stuff on the ocean. So that would make sense. Um, okay, so start off with some reading. We can probably fiddle with the code while we're doing that as well. Uh, so the most of the competitions in the past are usually based on a 2D grid. Uh, is that what we've got here? Sometimes it's a, it's a very dense grid that's made to look like floating, almost like floating point coordinates, but, uh, what have we got? Oh, in this case, it's a big grid. Interesting. So it's meant to behave more, more like real space, but uh, rather than a 2D board game, which is like 10 by 10. So that's interesting. They've changed it up this year. Um, last year's was... What was last year's? One of the last competition I did was... 
was Spring, but that wasn't a bot coding competition. That was an algorithms one, and I didn't really like it that much uh, because it was there were some problems with the site. Um, but we won't go into that. Um, all right. So. Okay, short description. That's what I like to see. Seabed security. All right, should we just, just start reading then? Let me grab my coffee as well. one of those drip coffees so I have to wait for the uh, all the water to drip through all right so let's have a look goal win more points than your opponent by scanning the most fish good we're not taking marine life from the oceans that's bad don't do that um In fact, when I was in Thailand last month, well, I'm often in Thailand, but uh, Thailand has surprisingly strict uh, rules about removing anything from the oceans, like even seashells. If, if, if you take seashells and make necklaces out of them, technically that's illegal and imprisonable uh, if you try to remove, if, if, you, if you put shells that you find on the beach, even if it's on the beach, if you put shells in your luggage, which a lot of tourists do, and tr leave Thailand, and they catch you, um, you can pay a huge fine, and in theory, you could get prison time, but in most cases, they probably just fine you. So yeah, removing any form of marine life, even if it's from the beach, is illegal in Thailand, which is good. That's the way it should be. Uh, I think more countries should uh, follow suit. Um, like, collecting shells from the beach to make necklaces, like, people, should, people need to stop doing that, because... Hermit crabs need those shells, uh, and other other marine life sort of relies on them being there. It's like the, the, the shells are supposed to be there, so yeah. So yeah, uh, we're just scanning them. We're not removing them. In Subnautica, I was removing them, removing coral to build spaceships and stuff. <laughs> uh, but I was just trying to survive, okay? Um... In fact, I, I remember discussing this with um, Wugger and Ball and Thespian and others. I don't think a vegan percent runoff sub Subnautica is even possible. I think at some point you have to destroy Coral to win the game. Like, you can't... You can't beat the game without killing plant life, uh, animal life. Coral are animals, technically. Alright, well, anyway, we're going off topic. Um... The game is played turn by turn. Each turn, each player gives an action for their drone to perform. Alright, well it looks like we have multiple drones. Or at least we may have multiple drones in the higher leagues. Um, the map is a square of 10,000 units on each side. Mm-hmm. Length units will be no denoted as U in the rest of the statement. Okay. Zero, zero is the top left, as always. All right. Each player has to explore the ocean floor and scan the fish. Each turn, the player can decide to move their drone in a direction or not activate its motors. Okay. Your drone continuously emits light around it. If a fish is within its light radius, it is automatically scanned. You can increase the power of your light, but this will drain your battery. So I'm guessing it's like, kind of like a, well, a, a, a disc around you? We'll see. Not a square. A disc would make more sense. On the map, different fish are present. Each fish has a specific type and color. 
In addition to the points earned, if you scan a fish and bring the scan back to the surface, bonuses will be awarded if you scan all the fish of the same type or same color, or if you are the first to do so. Ooh, that's interesting. So it's... So some games... I mean, it's always competitive, but some games it's sort of like... You're kind of playing your own game independently from your opponent, and you're not affecting each other that much. But it's still competitive. In this one, it seems it's going to be quite competitive because you're racing to be the first to complete certain fish, which would deprive your opponent of bonuses. So, um... It's... You have to pay more attention to what your opponent is doing than in some games, I guess. In some games, you can sort of play your own game, and, you know, if you want to reach the top of the league, you have to kind of look at what your opponent's doing, but you, you can get pretty far without doing so, but... Okay. Okay, my, my coffee should be ready by now. Also, today there's a um, free game on Epic, which is uh, Human Resources. It's a programming game. Who would have thought we get a programming game on Epic? Uh, I can't. I can't think of any time in the past where they've given away a programming game. It's a. It's a fun game. I, I streamed it last year, I think. No, this year maybe. I think it was this year. Yeah. A uh, game where you essentially use a drag and drop programming language to command office workers to pick up things and put them in fax machines and stuff. It's pretty fun. I recommend it. I recommend the sequel as well, which I think was much better, but the first game is free. So if anyone wants that game, claim it now, because it won't be free tomorrow. Why am I not appearing in the... Um Streamers list. I was earlier. That's weird. Let me open up the site in a separate um, tab. Huh. It's disappeared now. All right. All right, DJ. Enjoy the gym. Um, on the map, different fish are present. Okay, no, we already read that bit. Okay, drones. Drones move towards the given point with a maximum distance per turn of six hundred units. If the motors are not activated in a turn, the drone will sink by three hundred units. Okay. At the end of the turn, fish within a radius of 800 units will be automatically scanned. Radius. Okay. So this is like Manhattan distance, I suppose. Yay, I'm back on the list. I don't know why I disappeared from that list briefly. They decided I was too boring. And then they realized there's nobody else, so they might as well show me. <laughs> Um, if you have increased the power of your light, this radius becomes 2,000 units, so that's more than double. It's like two and a half. Uh, but the battery drains by five points. If the powerful light is not activated, the battery recharges by one. The battery has a capacity of 30 and is fully charged at the beginning of the game. So is the battery only used for light, not for movement? Interesting. So you should often use the light. Don't try to be too sparing with it because, I mean, um, it's there to be used. So if you can reach, if you can see fish further away, go for it. I think. All right. Points are awarded for each scan depending on the type of scanned fish. Being the first to perform a scan or combination allows you to earn double the points. 
So you've got type 0, type 1, type 2. You've got crabs. Dunno, angelfish or something. Um Is that an octopus? No. I mean it has a frog's head. That is not an octopus's head. That's a frog's head with eight tentacles. It's a frog octopus. And we've got a, a crab with one gigantic claw. The Kingler crab from Pokemon. Um Alright. And this fish has a cool hairstyle. Alright, all fish of one colour. Wait, what's that fish? That isn't in our list. Oh, we've got other we've got another kind of crab. I don't think these icons matter. I think okay, fine. I think it's you got fish, you got squids, octopus type things, and you got crab crabby type things. And you can have different uh, sprites for them, I suppose. That's fine. Alright, so type 2 gets the most points. And you get double points if you were the first to scan. Alright. If you get all fish of one colour... So if you get type 0, type 1, and... and they say fish, but these are not fish. Alright, all fish of one colour. So you get... Well, they've defined them to be fish, so I guess we're calling them fish. Alright. So if you get a flush, a fish flush, then you get three points. And if you were the first to get to scan, I guess for that color, then you get six points. I'm not sure. And all fish of one type. So it's like a... It's not, it's not really a poker hand. Um, it's like another kind of flush. Uh, you all, So for one type, you get all the fish. You get four points. So, I mean, if you want to be greedy to begin with, you should just go for that. All fish off type two. Because you get the most points per type two. And then you get a nice four, eight bonus for getting them all. The game reaches 200... Okay, it's victory conditions. The game reaches 200 turns. That's when the game ends, I suppose. A player has earned enough points that their opponent cannot catch up. How does it define that, I guess? I guess it just works out. Works out how much they could... I guess it doesn't really matter how they're calculating this. It could be that they're assuming the opponent's earning points every turn and just just it's impossible for them to get the that many points. Um, but in theory, I mean, you could scan everything in one turn if all the fish happen to be close together. So... Um, Okay, whatever. They've got some smart calculation for that. Doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect our strategy. Both players have saved the scans of all remaining fish on the map. Okay. In which case, it will come down to who got the bonus points. So bonus points matter. Let's check the um, advanced options. So we want, yeah, debug mode. Habitat? I don't know what that is. Others messages, yeah, sure. Let's just put these on and see what they do. <laughs> yeah, we do want darkness. That's helpful. For both, yeah, sure. Oh, these are one drone each? 
I thought we had multiple. Why are they both the same color? How are we supposed to know whose drone is who? Whose? I see. The boss is just kind of not targeting any fish. It's just kind of waiting for fish to appear in its radius, so we can beat the boss easily, probably. Um, what's fish habitat? What does that mean? I think it's implying that type 2 fish tend to be lower down. Interesting. Alright, I already have a good greedy algorithm in mind here, and I bet it will actually beat with three, le with three league. So, let's have a look at the what we got here. Creature count, creature IDs, blah blah blah. Alright, I think while I'm reading this we should start. Oh, you got starters as well, we never bother with them, but that's cool. 50 milliseconds per turn, 1,000 milliseconds. It doesn't seem like a game that's going to be heavy on the um, calculation. I remember there was one game which was becoming a bit of a problem because pruning the graph took a lot of people who were using Python a lot of time and there was a lot of memory management, manual memory management you needed to do, which was, I think it was the Pac-Man one maybe or something, I don't know. Which was... Uh, Some games you don't have to, I think it, your, the smartness of the algorithm is less about how you're pruning and more about just heuristics. Uh... Alright, so, what are we doing? Uh... Alright, let's start copying in some stuff from past... Alright, first of all, I want my log method. I always use that. Um, I'm going to have to uh, pull up some stuff. Also, from advent of code, I wrote a kind of like a pause, like a, a position method. I'm, I'm, I want to use that as well. So let's see. Spring challenge. Oh yeah, the ants one. Right, where's my... I'm gonna use this. So that's log. other methods we want to use from here. We want to use similar things, but I don't want to copy anything in. Oh yeah, we have Lloyd Warshall. So there's no obstacles in this map, so there's no reason to use pathfinding. Oh wait, looking at the wrong one. Yet. And I, maybe we, there won't be any? I don't know, we'll see. So, some people might have coded like A-star or something, you, you, you shouldn't. I don't think there's anything else I want to use from the... A prox Steiner forest, wow. Oh yeah, because I made hex trees. That was an interesting, interesting uh, challenge. Alright, um, alright, let's just start fresh. Okay, so... The other thing I want to copy in is my pause pause method. Let's find that. All right, I'm just pulling up PyCharm. 
check my advent of code solutions. Uh, one of them had like distance calculations as well and stuff like that. Addition, subtraction, everything. All right, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Let's have a look at these days. <laughs> okay. So we've got, we can just copy this one. All right, just copy this in. So we've got pause using data class, which is really useful. Um, and This is basically defining a position. We've got a row and a column. Uh, should we just use X and Y? Because I want to keep to what they're using. Are they using X and Y? Yeah, okay. X, Y. No. Yeah, okay. Uh, so. So this is all going to be We don't need this bit here. Okay, so this is basically just defining an xy coordinate pair. It's frozen, which means it's never going to change, it's immutable. We don't want to modify a single pause. We just want to when we add two pauses together, we get a new pause freshly created. All right, so this gives us a new pause. Uh, probably want subtraction. Let's put that in. Also, this is, sorry, I'll, I'll zoom in a bit. This is really zoomed out. You might want to. Mm, I would have liked if you could drop this. In fact, I would like to just remove this file together for now. I, I don't think you can. Or you can. Oh, you can do that. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Alright, so... Uh, define subtraction. Subtraction. It's just minus. Uh, probably want stuff like equality. So we just want essentially self dot x self dot y equals other dot x other dot y. Checking that the numbers are equal. Uh, hash. So you just want to hash that, essentially. As a tuple. Anything else? Less than? Yeah, we'll do that. Um, this is just in case we're using a priority queue or something. All right, anything else? Addition, subtraction, scalars, maybe, but don't worry about that for now. Okay, so that's position. All right. Uh, what else? Probably want some sort of grid. Let's 
have a look. So, each of these fish... Do they don't move, do they? Well, they do move. Interesting. So they always stay in their respective habitats. Interesting, they do. Okay. Um... Okay, so... So I want a, a notion of a uh, grid. So this is going to be... Frozen as well. So... It's going to have... What should we do? I don't want to create 10,000 by 10,000 whatever empty cells, because this is a sparse, sparse grid. There's just a bunch of objects and their respective locations. So, um, essentially we just want to store a hash map of entities and their locations. And if nothing, so basically, uh, we can use deep object uh, and can there only be one entity per no because you can have you could be in the same space as another drone and a fish couldn't you So you can have a bunch of entities in the same place. In fact, you can have multiple fish in the same place, so... So, let's say... Um, a grid maps a position to a list of entities, right? Uh, so it's gonna be a... Dict. How do you specify parameters? It's going to be... I don't know how you do this. You just say pause, comma, list. The list is also a list of entities. We don't need to, we don't need to worry about that for now. Alright. Um, we don't need to subclass entities. We can create a class for drones and a class for fish or whatever. Um, okay, leave that for now. Creature count equals that. Creature ID, color, type. So, what do we want to do with that? Do we want to make a creature class? So, they call them creatures here, which is the correct term. Before, they called them fish. But, of course, they're not all fish, are they? We've got squids, we've got... We've got... Crabs, they do not belong to the, uh... Fish... What is fish? Is it a order? Family? Class? I don't know, actually. Anyway. Um, Alright, we'll define a... Uh, We just okay define a a creature here. Wait, do we want? Hmm, hang on.
Yeah, okay, so we create a, uh, let's say a, uh, a class. Doesn't need to be, f yeah, it's frozen. All right, it's called creature. So it has an ID num. Which is int. Uh, color. Oh, I hate to spell it the American way. We don't have to. It's R code. That's the hint. Mm, can I just... I don't think... I think it's a bit naughty to use. No, no, it's okay if it's a, it's a parameter here. That's the int as well. And then this is a list of creature. All right, that's that's nice and uh, it all fits. So I'm not going to store the drones in the grid because I don't see any reason to right now. There's only one drone each, so it's not like we have to manage a whole bunch of drones. We can just store those as static variables. All right, so creature count. So we want... So we just want a creature's hash map. Let's say creature's creature's ID equals creature with those parameters. All right, so that populates all the creatures. All right, I, li I like this so far. It's nice and uh, nice and simple. Uh, so that fetches all the creatures. I like using round brackets here instead of square. It just just feels more functional, uh, because we're just getting those as they come. Uh, should we just check that this compiles? Or runs, even? Yeah, okay. So, I want to create a game. So we don't need memory for now. I don't think we ever will. It depends what, but it's, it seems like whatever we need to do, we can base it on what we see right now and not what we saw in the past, because the past doesn't matter at the moment. So we can rebuild a game every turn. So, um, we can uh, make this data class as we often do. I'm, I'm starting to use data class all the time now, but it saves a lot of coding. Okay, class game. So we want a, um, So does a drone or a drone have what 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 properties does a drone have? I guess we've got battery. Position, battery. That's it, really. Is there any reason to create a drone class? Oh, 
Oh, you'll be able to control two drones later. Then we probably should. Okay. Uh, let's create a drone class here. So we got data class. So, uh, drone. Do we need ID nums for drones? Probably. Yes. Okay. So we've got an ID num. I don't think we need to store the drone's position as a property of the drone. I think the drone doesn't know its own position. It's just the grid keeps track of that. We'll leave that out for now, but there may be a reason we want to do that later. So for now, we just want... Battery, I suppose. It's literally just the battery. Battery is an int. We'll have, pro we will have methods like... Um, Drain or increase battery, stuff like that. Alright, whatever. Um, battery int. Okay. Alright, is that all the classes we want so far? So we've got a game. Uh, let's say my drone. It's a drone. Enemy drone. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's a list. Enemy drone. Alright, what else do we want? So the drones know their, their batteries, so we don't need to store that. Um, So that gives us all the map information. Anything else? Um, points? Grid is the... goes up here. And we might need to override the init method. My points is an int. Enemy points is an int. Should we say turn number? Num turn int. What is all the information we would need, may need, but are given? I think that's it. I want the in... Hmm. When I create a game, I want to attach a grid to it. So if I do that, I want to define... Oh, 
spots then Okay, so for the grid we need to define an initialization, because otherwise it's expecting us to provide the dictionary. So here we just do self.grid equals uh, default dict list. Frozen. Well, I get that it's frozen, but can't I set a frozen? Oh, I see. In it is not allowed to change frozen variables. Isn't the point of well? Uh, okay. I mean, I want to be able to set them in the init, but then they're never allowed to be changed later. Okay. Well, whatever. We're not. We're not going to change things. Let's just take that out then. Okay. Also, right at the start, let's set um, width equals, what was it? Ten thousand. Okay. All right, what else? So I guess we don't can't freeze. Okay. Self dot grid equals grid. Uh self dot my drones self dot enemy. Drones equals empty list, empty list, self dot my points. Well, Set them to be none because we need to populate those. Self dot num turn equals none. Maybe there's a better way to do this. Uh, I think the proper way, we can actually make it frozen, but we just have to supply all the parameters when we create it. We can do that, that's fine. So we're not, we, won't, we won't have an init method, instead we'll just supply those parameters. All right, so in the game loop, um, grid equals create a new grid, all right? So that populates a new grid. The old one is, is discarded or whatever in memory. All right, so we get my score, O score, I prefer to call it enemy score. Oh, I see we're using the uh, underscores normally. That's, that's, we should do that. Let's, let's keep to that convention. Uh, Does look it does look better to be honest. All right. <laughs> I 
Do I have some crisps? I need some crisps. So these crisps are V Ga Kai Po Mai Han Kwok. Translation Korean spicy chicken with cheese. Hello Tanvir. Just waiting for your stream. Oh really? Were you watching some of my advent of code in the past? So yeah, Avenger code I'm finally done with. Now I can move on to this coding game. So far it looks it looks pretty fun. Um nice simple game layout. Nothing overly complex. It's not like that Dota. In the past we had a Dota clone, which was a it took a long time to put together all the classes and stuff, because there was like you had different um, heroes and they had their own properties and stuff. This one is just fish, their locations, and their. So you stream during winter challenge. Ah, okay, yeah. Winter challenge was. Uh, what last year's? In De was that in December? What was that? Was that the ants? No, the ants was in spring. The winter challenge. Which one was that? Let's have a look. That was the spring challenge, so the winter one. Spring Oh you, oh yeah, the spring, because the winter the winter challenge that uh this year they didn't do a... Uh, a bot challenge. They did a uh, algorithm, like a coding competitive coding competition, which I didn't like as much. It was fun in, in its own right, but it wasn't. I prefer these bot bot coding ones. Yeah, the spring challenge was the ants. Yeah, that was a nice one. It involved a lot of kind of like network network theory in graphs. It was hexagonal. I like hexagonal maps, even though they're a bit more complex. Um, Cool. So yeah, it's been been a long time since that. Uh, this one we've got a two D grid, but it's a very big grid, so it's kind of sparse. Uh, um, I don't know if you've already had a look at the description for this. Um, so far, I've coded most of the uh, properties that I need. I just need to now populate my game so it's going to be so we've got a grid my score enemy score don't want as many lines oh no, no okay we'll do that uh my scan count what's my scan count That's how many I've counted. Do I need that variable? I don't think I do. Why would I care how many I've counted? I care which ones I've counted, but that should be stored in a um, fish by fish basis. But I don't care how many I've counted. All right, so we won't store that. Amount of scans. Yeah, we don't care about the amount. We just care about which ones. All right, so Hmm 
Hmm, interesting. Let's have a think. Alright. So... It looks like... Oh! I get it. We don't... We don't need... My scan count is purely for this for loop to make sure we, we capture the right number of things. It's giving us the IDs. Ah, okay, okay. So... So we want to store the set of creatures we have scanned. So, my drones, enemy drones, my points, enemy points, num turn. Num turn comes from this. Do we get num turn here? Doesn't look like it. We're gonna to have to actually remember. Um, we can say or turn in count starting from one. No, no, start from zero. Count. We want. From ITER tools import count. This is just, it just counts infinitely from zero upwards. It, it's useful. Okay, for num turn and count. All right. My score, enemy score. My scan count. All right, creature ID. I see. All right, so we want. Uh, My scanned creatures equals set of creatures. Okay. Enemy enemy scanned creatures is a set of creatures. So if we want to hash creatures, we have to define hash. And we just want to hash the ID now because that's unique. Okay. So we want For my scanned creatures equals set, creature ID equals that, so we want my scan creatures dot add creatures creature ID. And then we want a similar thing here. We want to, okay, let's separate these out because we've got a lot of stuff here. Right. Enemy scanned creatures equals set. I don't like foe. Call him enemy. Um. So it's going to be basically this. Okay, so we've got the scanned creatures for myself and the enemy. What else? Drone count. Visible creature count. Oh, you can only see, you can't see the whole map at any given time. Oh.
Hang on. Let me read this again. It doesn't fully expand on this. Only close by fish will be visible. Ah, okay. So in this league, we can see everything. But then, we have limited vision. I see. So... Keep that in mind, but it doesn't matter for now, but we have infinite vision right now. Okay, that's fine. So we've got a grid. We don't need the grid yet. Find the grid here. Okay, there's different ways we can go about this. Let me have a think. Um, so the grid will just store visible stuff. What about drones? Can we see where the drones are? Can we see where enemy drones are? Doesn't really make it clear. All right. Doesn't matter. Okay, we can just say... All right, I think for the grid, we want, instead of grid, we want to say... Creatures and drones so this is going to be this and this so this grid is basically what we can see there's no true grid we can think about some sort of true grid which keeps track of where we remember things to be. That would be interesting. You can. This will be like the Pac-Man one, where you can sort of keep a keep track of where things might be and create floating point variables for like the probability. Like, five turns later, you know the fish might have gone this far away, so... You can sort of guess where it might be at a certain time. That'd be interesting. For now, let's just work with what we can see. Alright, so... Um... 
Alright, grid. My drone count equals this. But I am range my drone count, drone ID, X, Y, emergency battery. Okay, so we want. Uh, grid dot drones. So we want the X and Y. As the key dot append drone so we've got the id num and the battery okay they've given us the battery we don't need to keep track all right i prefer renaming this to enemy Okay, so here, we do the same thing. Drone scan count. What's drone scan count? Is that what the drones can see right now. So what's the turn order here? You... Does the scan happen before you move? Why would you ever wait? If you move to your current spot... Isn't that basically... Waiting? But without sinking? So I don't understand why you'd ever wait. I suppose engines might use battery. It doesn't right now, but it might later on. So at the end of the turn, so you move first. I see. So your visibility is higher than your your um your, your movement radius. Okay. Your scan radius, I mean. Fine. But wait, so what is drone scan count exactly? Drone scan count. So my scan count is this. What's why have we got drone scan count? I don't think we need that. Because it's not going to tell us what we can scan at the end of the turn. It's telling us what we can scan if we stay still. But you can't stay still unless you move to zero zero. But that's just that's just a very specific case. So why would we want this? It doesn't even come up in this input thing. My drone count, enemy drone count. We've got drone ID, drone X, drone Y, battery. Yep, that's those. It doesn't even say anything about scan count. That's weird. Okay, let's just not do anything with that. I don't, I don't know. Alright. Invisible creature count. Alright, so here... Um, what is radar? We don't use that, do we? This league. The rest of the variables can be ignored and will be used in later leagues. 
Oh, okay, fine. So we'll ignore scan count for now. Radar blip count. Visible creature. Count. I think drone scan count is total number of scans happening in a turn. But scans don't happen... We don't know what scans will happen in a turn, will we? Until we've moved. Or is it what happened the previous turn? Because this is the input for this current turn. But the scans only happen at the end of the turn. So this what so that is to be decided depending on where we end up at the end of this turn. So it could be telling us what happened the previous turn. I think they'll tell us in the later leagues. So maybe I shouldn't worry about it. So visible creature count is the bit we care about, I suppose. Um Creature ID, creature X, creature Y, creature velocity X. Ooh, they have velocities. Huh. In that case, I suppose I should um, actually store the positions and velocities. Well, that's interesting. All right then, changing change of plan. Let's um, make these uh, non make these so no longer make creature immutable. I'm gonna make it mutable. It's dangerous, but oh, we'll just do it this way. We want to say we have a position, which is this, and that's that's changeable. So this is no longer frozen. Um. And um, velocity, which is a pause as well. Drone, similar, we'll say, um, Position, but they don't have velocity. Okay. Missing for parameters pause. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Creature has, let's say, it has no position and no velocity to begin with. Fine. Minus one, minus one. You're off the map. You're not allowed to use nuns for a, if it's expecting a pause. I don't like doing that. It's just it's usually just a hack, but whatever. Right. Drones. So here we need a position, which is that. Let's just say. Pause equals that. So we've got pause to append drone. Da, 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 da. Pause. Okay. You know what? I don't think we even really need a grid anymore. We, li we we all we need is a list of the drones, don't we? We don't care about grid because we're not thinking in terms of geometry. Or maybe we sort of are, but but no, we're not. We don't care about the geometry of the situation right now. We all the knowledge we have is limited to a set of drones we see and a set of creatures we see. At no point will we ever want to say, okay. What is in location x equals thousand, y equals thousand? Why would we ever do that? Instead, we just go through a list of things we know and we go towards them. So maybe 
I should discard this for now. We might need it later on, but we'll just hide it for now. And instead, so just take that out. Instead, we just say, these are my drones, these are the enemy drones. My points, enemy points, blah, 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 my scanned creatures, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we need visible creatures. Should we make it a set? That means it's, it's, we can quickly look up whether something's visible or not. Okay, take out the grid. So we don't put it there, instead we put it in um, my drones. Separate some of this stuff out. Emergency. Okay, we don't care about that right now. Drone scan count, we're not dealing with, so ignore that. We still need to do the in the input though. Okay, um, visual, visible creature count. We need that one. So creatures IDE dot pause. We update the pause to be what we've just seen. We've updated our knowledge of this. Uh, we've update the velocity to be this. All right, and then we just plug visible creatures dot add add the clock the instance. Okay, so that adds the visible creatures. Is that everything captured, and then finally we just create a game. So we don't store a grid. Doesn't seem to be any point in doing that. Just let all the individual entities know what their positions are. Because it's a it's a sparse graph. So grid stuff would be a waste of memory because you're just kind of storing stuff about locations and stuff, which is pointless. Because there's so many locations and most of them are empty. Okay. Uh... Alright. Finally. We create a game. Game equals game. All right, so we've got my drones. Hang on. Yeah, okay. My drones, enemy drones, my points, enemy. Points num turn, which is the iteration of this loop. We need more stuff, don't we? My drones, enemy drones. Why is it visible creatures coming up? My drones, enemy. Okay, okay. First, let's decide what order we want these just for the. 
Okay, put num turn to begin with. All right, num turn. Just put the, the basic variables up here. Okay, those are like the uh, kind of like global parameters. And then we've got the drones. And then we've got the creatures. Whoops, whoops, whoops. There we go. Nicely separated. So if I'm doing that, then we have to say um, my. Okay, so it's going to be. All right. Night num turn. Then we got my points, enemy points, enemy points, my drones, enemy drones, and then visible creatures. And then my scanned creatures. And then enemy scanned creatures. And these are immutable, so we're not allowed to change these now. For this instance of game. Visible creatures is defined here. My points, enemy points. Yeah, we'll say score. Call it score. Good to keep to the um, the terminology they've decided to use as often as we can. Okay, visible creatures. Ex expected, expected five positional. What? Why is it complaining about that and not my scanned creatures? I don't know, try running it. Six positional arguments, but nine were given. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What? Should be eight. And I didn't give nine, did I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I gave... Wait, what? What does that error actually mean? Game.init takes six positional arguments, but nine were given. Take that out. Is it okay for me to leave spaces there? It should be. Why are there only f my drones, enemy drones? Why are those two? What, what about the other ones? Default dict is not accessed. Why is that showing up as well? What? Oh yeah, we're not using it anymore. I'll take that out for now. Why doesn't it like this? Well, X 
expected five positional. We've redefined game. It doesn't look like what it used to look like. Now it looks like this. What? Why is it still thinking it looks like what it used? What? Why is it num turn my score enemy score my drones enemy drones? That's num turn my score enemy score my drones enemy drones. Those five. Does it not like set? <gasps> I wrote equals here. Oh my god! I don't even know what that means. If you do that, it's supposed to be colon. <laughs> There we go. What would equals mean? I suppose that's... Oh, I see. You could use equals to initialize something. Oh, that might actually be useful. In some cases. Alright, so... Um... So, can I do this? Pause equals none, for example. So, when we initialize drone, we don't need to provide a pause. That's what I want. Is that allowed? Although I do kind of want to specify that it should be a pause, but that's not important. We won't make that mistake. Is that fine? Seems fine. Okay, we can do that. So, um... That's good. That means we can keep it frozen. Can we? No, we don't want to keep it frozen. Uh, drone, pause equal none. So here, creature can say um, just do this pause equals none velocity equals none all right like is, if we don't know where they are then it's better to just leave it none and if there is something there that means we've seen it before it may not be this turn but this is the last known location and that will be useful. We'll probably find a use for that at some point. Alright, we're almost ready to do our main turn logic. Um, so now... Game. Okay, so we've got a game. Define... All right, how do we do the drone stuff? We say uh, for each drone, we give it one order, right? And it has to be in order for All right, so for now, Okay, so the different ways we could go about this. If we can, so in the past I used to do it like every time I've decided what I wanted a drone to do, I'll just print that order. Now I like to make it a bit more rigorous and just keep a list of orders. And then at the very end, 
I go through all of them and print them all out. That kind of kind of has stronger guarantees that you're not going to make a mistake because then you you each drone knows what it's going to do. All right, so let's let's do it that way. So that means a drone is going to have its orders. Uh, order equals none, essentially. So when we decide what a drone is going to do, we we append its order, right? And then game. So when we when we actually want to output. Write all these methods. So if I want to move a given drone, um, towards a given position with a given light, um, that boolean. So it's, 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 it's one if we want to turn the light on, otherwise false. So let's say it's false by default. If I want to do that, then basically drone dot drone dot order equals. So we're going to set its order to be um, Um, basically this move this I still use the kind of the old string approach I haven't really learned how to use f strings I'm too lazy Let's switch to that so um that <laughs> so we go pos dot x pos dot y and then it's going to be kind of int of light. So it's one if it's true. One if we want to turn the light on. So that's just gives a drone its order. And that, that can be overwritten if our logic decides to do that. And it could be left blank, then it would just be none. So this is kind of safer. Define. See, I don't see any reason why we would ever want to wait. Because if you could move zero, zero, that will actually stop you from sinking. So there's no reason you would ever want it to let it sink. Um, well, uh, yeah, I mentioned this before. Maybe it's something to do with battery or something. But we'll leave weight out. If we want, if we don't have an order, we'll just say move zero zero zero. So, no, no, not move zero zero zero. Move to your current location. Um. Whatever. Okay, so uh, okay, define process orders. All right, for drone in self dot my drones. If drone dot order is yeah, if drone.order, then we just print drone.order, all right? Else, we have to give it a sensible default. So we'll just say, I don't want to wait. I'd rather just move to my current location. That will stop me from sinking, because that's... Sinking is kind of unpredictable, sort of. So... So let's say... self.move move drone 
to its its own position with no light and print own dot border. But okay, there's a cleaner way of doing this. Uh, if your own dot border is none, do that. And then in either case, print drone dot order on a separate line. Okay. So now process orders and then we've got decide orders. Define decide orders. And here we'll just not do anything. So the only thing we do here is Yeah, don't do any of this. So we say Yeah, we don't want we don't want that either. So we create a game, decide the orders, and then process orders. That's it. So for now, this should just wait. Except it won't wait. It should just move to its same location. So it should just stay still. Which is better than sinking, because sinking, you don't know where you're going to end up. Going on creature in it. Ah, yeah, take these out. None type object has no attribute X. But the drones... Ah! Okay. Drone equals drone so we've got all right in this case it does actually make sense to provide a position all right you know what let's make a slight change um Go back to the drone definition. When you create a drone, it has a fixed... Okay, we do want this to be frozen. Position. And um, we provide a position. Because we never actually change that. The creature's position changes. Because every time we see it, we update the velocity for the position. Drone is created each turn and then discarded. We don't keep track of memory of drones and stuff. So... Might as well do it that way. So then, oh wait, drone to order. Ah, no, it doesn't. It can't be frozen. Damn it, because we're changing its orders. Unless, unless orders is a is a game variable. Actually, it probably should be. Now let me think. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for a drone to store its orders. Order is a very game-specific thing. Alright, so... If I'm doing that, then um, in the game... We have... 
borders equals just a hash map, which maps a drone to its border. Uh, decide orders, pass, drone. Okay, so move, drone. Uh, so here instead we do self dot orders drone equals. So we override whatever its previous order was if it had an order. Do that. Okay. Process orders for drone and self dot my drones. If drone not in self.orders, so it doesn't have an order, then we just do this self.orders Yeah, then we give it an order and now we do print its order Is that right? Let's try this now Oh wait So when we create a drone, we give it a drone ID, a battery, and a pause. So drone is waiting for three. in circles here. Drone. ID num, battery, pause. <gasps> it equals again. God's sake. Drone, battery, pause. Let's just clean this up a bit. Um, don't need too many lines here. Just say, okay, we unpack all the variables and then we just say... <laughs> yep, do that. So let's do the same logic here. So we've got that. We don't need that. We can just say, uh, put that here. That, okay, like that. So we're staying still, we're moving to our same location. All right, now what? What, okay. Finally, we're at a stage where we can actually think about our logic. So here, decide orders. Let me, let me put this at the bottom because it's like what, what we're gonna access the most. All right, what do we want to do? Let's just do the most basic thing, which will yield some sort of um, result. So I reckon we just... <sighs> look through every, all the visible fish, pick the one which we haven't seen, we haven't scanned already, which has the highest... Okay, so all, look through all the visible fish. And if we haven't scanned it yet, then we put it into our candidates list. And then from our candidates list, we just pick the one with maximum... Um, maximum uh, type, because that's like, that's like the best score. Don't worry about color and all that stuff. Just go for the maximum type. 
and break the ties on position, so go for the one which is closest. Simple as that. So, decide orders. And if there is nothing, if there are no visible candidates, which won't happen... Well, it will happen, because even if everything's visible, if we've scanned everything, we still need to do something if we've scanned everything, because we have to wait for our enemy to kind of do his moves. The game won't end yet, I think. In which case, we just have to... Should we just say go to the bottom middle location? Yeah, let's do that. Alright. So let's say candidates equals that. Okay. Or creature in self dot visible creatures. So we just go through all the visible creatures. Uh, let's say if creature not in my scanned creatures then candidates.append creature. So we basically just create a list of all the unscanned creatures that we can see. And now just pick the um, the minimum. Yeah, wait, no. Okay. If not Hang on. All right, if we've got multiple drones, then we need to assign one to each. So we can say, um, For each drone, all right. Let's make this a set. So we create a set of all visible creatures across the board. All right, and now for drone in self dot my drones. So we say if not candidates, if there's no candidates left for this drone to take on, then just continue. All right? Otherwise, we um, pick the one which is closest to my drone. So, well, no, pick the one with the highest. Hang on, let me have a think here. I've got a better way of doing this. Okay, so drones to be assigned. All right. So 
So we've got a bunch of candidates that we want some drones to find, right? And we want to create, we want, we have a list of drones to be assigned. Is going to just be a set of my drones. All right, so this is the setup. We've got a set of creatures to be scanned, a set of drones which want to scan something, right? And now, um, let's say this is a list. <laughs> And now we sort this. Candidates dots. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on. I need to have a think about this. Alright, uh, keep it simple. Uh, we're going to sort by the type. Uh, key equals lambda for a given creature, creature dot type. Um, reverse equals true because we want to have that, the, the highest type, which is the most points, at the start of the candidates, right? Um, okay. While So we keep going until we either run out of candidates or run out of drones. Normally we would run out of drones. While drone series signed and candidates. So as long as there's at least one drone and one candidate, they could be assigned to each other, right? So there's always gonna be a possibility until one of these sets runs out. So keep doing this. Alright, so um while drones to be assigned and candidates, uh no, 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 better way to do this. Or candidate in candidates, because that will actually go through these from the best to the next best, the next best, and so on. Okay. Uh, if not drones to be assigned, there's no drones left, then we break out of this loop. Okay. Otherwise, we have a candidate, we want a drone to be assigned. Let's pick the one which is closest. So, um, let's say, drone closest drone equals the minimum of uh, drones to be assigned. E equals lambda. When would a creature be visible? Is it when the creature is under the light of your drone? Um, I think that's not explained. So right now, everything's visible. Uh, I think that's a new thing that will be introduced. I don't think it'll be the, based on the light because that would mean those are already scannable and it, the movement doesn't make sense. I think you probably have... I don't know. I think you probably have a visibility range which is larger than your light, or maybe not. I'm not sure. Because light and scan range... Hang on. Hang on, maybe I've missed... Maybe I've missed a couple of things. Yeah, light radius is the same as scan radius. But... That means everything that's visible is going to get scanned. 
So... They haven't actually defined visibility. I think it's going to be... If you see here, it says in later leagues, only close by fish will be visible. So we have to wait and see what how that works. It could be that visibility is different from scan range. Don't know. So we want key equals lambda. Oh, we need a um a notion of distance here. Uh, let me have a look at this again. We're moving kind of like we're not moving diagonally, are we? Can we move diagonally? Is it hamming distance? Uh, okay. Drones move towards the given point with a maximum distance per turn of 600 units. What does that mean? Horizontal and vertical, or including diagonals, because that makes a world of difference. Or Euclidean? I, I don't think it's Euclidean. You can have a look at the source code. We have something in Python. Well, I mean, I can read Java. Ooh, closest.java. This might. How is this defined? Get mean. Get mean pause. What? see what that algorithm for movement is. Move action. Allow emoji. <laughs> this is what I want to see. Coding game dot game dot action dot move action. No, is that? Vector? Will they have dis distances here? Distance, here we go. Ooh, it's Euclidean. have said that, that would be very important information because usually it's not. Okay, fine. It's Euclidean. So we can use we can use square distances just so that we don't have to deal with floating point numbers. So dist 
this two, which means this squared. Uh, return, so it's going to be absolute value of self dot x minus other dot x. Well, I could do it like this. Plus self dot y minus other dot y. So this is distance squared. So we can compare on the distance squared. <sighs> so we're picking the minimum distance squared drone with the minimum distance squared. So self dot orders. So just do self dot move. Uh, this closest drone to this candidate's position. Don't worry about the light for now. And then... Dot remove drone so that we don't deal with him again. Okay. Just do that. That's the most basic algorithm I can think of. It's not. It's not. I could easily come up with more basic algorithms like that. Like just go to an arbitrary fish or something. I've tried to do something that is both simple and smart. Kind of balanced. Let's see what it does. So to recap. Um, we order all the fish by how valuable they are. And then, starting with the most valuable fish, we say, okay, the closest drone, go to that fish. And then the next most valuable fish, we pick a different drone. Okay, from the drones that are left, we take the closest one and send him here, and so on. So this is me. I'm basically going to the most valuable fish on the board each turn. And then, once it's scanned, we go somewhere else. Seems pretty good, right? We're only just keeping up with the boss, though. But now the boss is doesn't know what to do because he's just kind of fallen down. We could turn the light on as well, because if we have the battery to do it, why not? Should we submit that? Let's just submit that then. Test in arena. This might be good enough, but otherwise we can turn the light on. Oh, it looks like we're winning across the board. That's to be expected. Usually in drone, in wood 3, I mean, a lot of people have broken code or just code that's not very, very, very basic. So it's not too hard to beat everyone. We're fourth, but I, I, I think we'll beat the boss. Um, yeah, we could just always turn the light on. It doesn't harm us other than harming our battery, but then the battery recharges. So we can say if. Just make that change now. If we have battery, just say, um, closest drone dot 
battery is greater or equal to what was it five if it's greater or equal to five then yes turn the light on let's try that so we've got 80 points here i bet we'll get more points now because we'll, we'll, we'll scan them faster and we also capture some other ones as well that's cool see you see we caught that one earlier gives us more time to uh go further oh we got fewer points that time i think it's just luck of the draw but you i think it just caused the caused our decision to caused us to go in a different way but i still think it's better to do that like why would you ever not I think it just made us go a different direction. So it was unlucky, but I think it's still a good thing to do. All right, we'll just wait for this to resolve because I think we will easily progress. Not lost a single battle here. The progression is pretty quick. I mean, sometimes in the past the competitions have been had ground to a halt because it's it stuck on 30% forever or something. But I, I mean, over the years, they probably upgraded the servers and a uh, better account for large numbers of people because this is getting more and more popular by the year. And it might not be a very busy time right now. The busiest times are normally when the, the new leagues open and everyone's rushing to... Uh, get promoted and then the servers grind to a halt. Alright, so we're two hours in. We've now I'm pretty happy with that code. I bet it will be it might even beat wood two, even with the new rules, we'll see. Because we've sort of accounted for the visibility. So if they now reduce visibility So only close by fish You'll be able to control two drones. Yeah, we've accounted for that. We're, we're dealing with a list of drones. Deep sea monsters or roam. We have not accounted for that. But... Whatever. <laughs> Whoa. Just wait for this to resolve. There we go. There's the ding. Promotion to Wood 2 League. We are the best. I'm still the only one streaming. I... Well, what time is it in the US? Oh, what time is it in Europe? That's where most users are. It's in the morning. Oh. All right, promotion. The game is now played in darkness. Your drones can only see fish in their light radius. Interesting. So now... Now... Our algorithm is a bit strange because if we see, see a fish in our light, we're already about to scan it. So there's no reason to move closer, is there? Should we just resubmit this with the with the light? Now we're turning the light on. That's probably better because we need as much visibility as we can get. Okay, just do this one. Okay. Winning a few, losing a few, that's fine. So So what are the new rules here? Oh, we still only got one drone. So I think the problem is, the big problem is, 
now, most of the time, we're not going to see any fish. We're just going to stay still. And that's bad. Because staying still at the top of the map, you're not going to get anything. In fact, you literally won't get anything because the fish never go up there. So, we have to... We have to go deeper. No, so... We have to take into account the fact that these fish are based on tiers. So, um, we should go towards, <clears throat> let's think, let's think, um, I need some numbers here. We need to start putting some numbers for some variables here. Um, what is our light radius? Okay, so... Move... Move... This equals 600. Sinking we don't care about. That's, that's, we never sink on purpose. Like, we could just move 300 units down. Like, no, no point sinking. Um, light radius. Light radius equals 800. Light radius big equals two thousand. Uh, we could put these other parameters in, but I'm not bothered about them. The drone is near the surface. The scans will automatically be automatically saved, and points will be awarded. <gasps> oh, there's something I forgot. There's something I completely forgot about. We're supposed to swim back to the surface. Oh. So at the end of the game, all unsaved scans are automatically saved, and associated points are awarded. So... Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so... If... We have bonus points available, because we've got, like, a flush, a fish flush, then we want to go to the surface, maybe, to cash in on those bonus points as quick as possible. Otherwise, we want to target the, the fish we want to target. Okay, so this becomes way more interesting. Um, we don't want to stay still. Differences between um, drone scan. That's that's the point of drone scan count. I see now. Okay, so the scans that a single drone is is holding have to be brought to the surface if we want to cash them in. So, 
here we've got zero points and oh yeah because we never move because there's no fish up there Wait, this 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 program's useless for this sleep all right so what's the next step um let's let's keep it simple though i reckon we should head towards the band where we think um we're gonna find some nice fish this thing about candidates, global candidates. Each drone will work independently based on what he sees because he has a very limited visibility range. So if a drone sees fish around him that he hasn't scanned yet, I think he should just stay still for now. So that will guarantee he'll get those scans. Because if he moves, then he might risk moving away from them and not capturing them. So we want to rework this. So... I want to say, um, yeah, all of this has got to go. It's completely making too many assumptions. All right. Uh, so I, I I'll just go in, in drone order, or drone in self dot my drones. So each drone has independent logic for now until we need to do something smarter um okay so the thing about the visibility um so if you put the light on last turn <sighs> let me have a look at this thing about visibility Are we allowed to try to turn the light on even if we don't have battery? Is it going to be error? Because that's bad, but... Uh... And then the light radius. So if last turn you turn the light on, then your light radius is going to be larger. So if you see a fish and it's in your outer radius, you, you want to keep the light on to be able to scan that this turn. Alright, so... I think whatever whatever we can see <laughs> All right, let's do some coding. Um All right, so for a given drone, I want to first I want to compute a list of all the fish in range, fish, no, no, creatures in range, in range equals. So it's going to be C for C in self dot visible creatures if. Uh, 
if c dot dist hang on if drone dot pos dot dist two of c dot pos is less than or equal to let's say light radius big squared so that basically gets everything that's in range we have a decision to make all right if any of them are in our outer range but not in our inner range Oh, wait, we also want to not include any we've scanned before. So if, if, C not in self dot my scanned one tooltip, whatever self dot my scanned creatures and let me just parenthesize these to make it easier to read so it's we're taking all the c's all the creatures that are not scanned yet and happen to be in range. Three situations either we need the light to get to them we need the light to see them we don't need the light so we can leave the light off and just scan the ones which are within in the inner range or we need the light to see them but we don't have battery in which case we should move towards towards them uh, Alright, so let's think. If there's no creatures in range, then... Then we move on to the next phase, don't we? Alright, let's see. If... Creatures in range. So in this case, we um, we want to decide what to do. So the furthest creature equals max creatures in range key equals lambda c maps to um, this basically that's the furthest one hello DRJ that goes the coding it's going all right uh, I've passed the initial league which is the basic one uh, now we need to rework our logic because our current logic was just to stay still if we don't see any fish so in the first league we had infinite visibility we could see all the fish so if we saw a fish we'd go towards it and if we didn't see a fish we'd stay still 
which was fine because we could see all the fish. Now in this league, we have a very small visibility, so most of the time we see no fish. So our current program is just saying, if you don't see any fish, stay still. But that's fruitless because you're just going to stay still and nothing's going to happen because you're never going to see any fish. Because they do, because you're just waiting for them to swim towards you. So now we need to tell him to actually search for fish and not just stay in one place. So basically we get no points right now. So the furthest creature we can see is that. Alright, so I would say... <laughs> okay, so we found, for a given drone, we found all the creatures we can see. We found the one which is furthest away. So we want to say, if... distance um, between me and that furthest creature is less than or equal to the inner light radius, which is going to be um, 800. then I just want to stay still. So... We could just define a, a weight move. Um, is this the game, same website you did the RTS game on? Probably, since I don't the only two sites I do, really, are Advent of Code and Coding Game. Yeah, the last time I did a streams on this was... Ants. There were ants walking around collecting resources and bringing them back to base. That was in the spring this year. On a hexagonal map. So yeah, this one is conceptually less complex. Which I like. Nice and simple to describe. We just, we have submarines, drones even, swimming around in the ocean looking for fish and scanning them. Not taking them out of the ocean, just scanning them. Um, let's define a weight move. So. Say light equals false. Simply that. Okay. Nice simple weight, weight move. So we can say just do this. Self. Okay. So if we If the furthest creature is in way in range, we just do drone dot weight. No, 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 no. Self dot weight drone. Else, that means in the else that means the furthest creature is is further out. So we need to turn our light on. But if we don't have enough battery for the light, then we can't. So okay. If drone dot battery is 
greater or equal to, okay, let's make a variable here, constant, uh, light charge equals five. The amount of charge needed to turn on the light. Is that a descriptive enough light charge? Light, yeah, go with that, light charge, light cost, no, uh, light charge. If we have enough battery for light charge, then we do self dot weight drone true. So we wait, but we turn the light on. And if we don't, um, we have to just move towards move towards the fish. Because otherwise we can't really scan it. Now this could be improved because you can actually find kind of the best position to be in to capture the maximum amount of fish. In fact, we could leave a uh, Find optimal movement to capture most fish creatures. But that's a very minor thing for now. Okay, so that tells us what to do if we see a creature. Then continue on to the next drone. So if we get to this point, then... Um, there are no creatures in range, so we have to decide on a sensible place to go. So let's say... Should we just say... We look at all the remaining fish. We know we know what fish we haven't scanned yet. We, we, look, we, we decide whether they are in tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. And we go to the lowest lowest tier that still has unscanned fish because that's the best points so we say okay if there are any tier three fish or tier two goes zero one two we go to the middle of this band here so we just go down like here and if there aren't any then we go here and if there aren't any we go here whatever uh And uh, and just wait. Should probably turn the light on as well. To coordinates what is it it's like okay 5,000 the middle it seems to go from 7,500 to 10,000 so it's seven 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 thousand five hundred 5,000, 2,500. Are the fish randomized or always in the same place? Their initial positions are randomized, I'm pretty sure. And they have a, uh, a, some sort of deterministic path they follow. So they've got velocity and position, but they, have, they actually have AI, so they each decide where they're going. Maybe they swim back and forth. I mean, we can run this and just watch them. Um, it seems that they have a sort of unpredictable 
path that follows some sort of regularity. So they go at some at some point they turn around and change direction or go somewhere else. I don't know. So we can look into that in the future because then you can if you if you see where they are and where their velocity is headed and we know roughly what their behavior is, then 10 turns later we can predict where we think where they'll probably be. But that's a bit complex for now. For but for the time being, I'm, I'm assuming that it's just completely randomized, yeah, so we don't know where they are at any time. So, um... Um, okay, so if there's no creatures in range, I think we want to find the max tier, max unscanned tier equals Let's, let's create a variable. Unscanned creatures equals set of creatures minus set of scanned ones. Okay, so that's how many are unscanned. If... Alright, if if there are no unscanned creatures, there's literally nothing left to do. Uh, actually, we should just head to the surface. Should we create a new quick method? So, we just want to know what our current X position is. Keep our X position the same, go vertically up. That's the fastest way to get to the surface. So, X equals drone.pause.x. So, we want to do self.move. Um, drone um, to position, so it's going to be the X position is going to be X and the Y position is going to be zero. And the light, just leave the light off. Normally you would want to turn the light on though, because why not scan things on the way? Alright, so... Drone.head Self.head to surface Drone. Continue. Alright, nothing left to do, just go to the surface. Alright, and, and save your scans. 
All right. If not unscanned, creature self talks head to the surface. Um, so at this point, there are unscanned creatures. Let's say max unscanned tier type equals, it's going to be the max of C dot type or C in unscanned creatures. Okay, and then it's if else. If max unscan type is so it goes from zero one two. Is it? Zero one two. Two is the Ah, we've got mins and maxes. We should Alright, let, let's store these bands, because these are it's uh valuable things. Uh Bands equals let's say type bands equals so it goes from zero maps to two thousand five hundred to five thousand inclusive I suppose. Oh, we have the exact AI here. Each fish moves within a habitat zone based on its type. If it reaches the edge of its habitat zone, it will rebound off the edge. If a fish comes within 600 of another, it will begin to swim in the opposite direction to the nearest fish. But fish means creature because crabs and... Oh, what, what is this? We've got hermit crabs as well? Do they even swim? Interesting. Okay, so... Um... Well, crabs don't swim either. Or do they? Maybe some crabs do actually swim. I've never seen them swimming. I think some crabs can probably jet. Like, they can probably jet water from the back, out of the back of them just to, to propel themselves through the water. I wouldn't be surprised. In the same way that clams do. Um... Okay, let me just store these bands. So zero to that, one, two. Thousand, seven thousand five hundred. I don't know if it's inclusive. Can they actually be right on the border? No, it doesn't really matter. Seven thousand five hundred, ten thousand. All right, so max and okay, so we don't. So the um, altitude target depth equals. So it's going to be type band. Of the max and unscanned type, that gives us the, uh, the tuple. Just sum sum these two together. Divide by two. Type type band type bands. I'll call it type band. What is a band? Is it two bands or is it the band that's between the two boundaries? I would say the latter. So that gives us a... What the heck does this mean? 
type and maps ints to tuples of ints, right? Int pair of ints. So it doesn't even need to be a hash map. We can just do this. Call it type bands, then then it's more of a bands rather than a band. Okay. And now we want type bands. Type bands, max unscan type. So that's gonna be an int. I think it's just losing it's it's just weekly it doesn't know what type is supposed to be there i think it's fine target depth equals that so we'll move um so self dot move drone to position so it's going to be The X will be width over two. Y value will be target depth. And the um, light, just turn the light on whenever we have charge. So drone dot battery is great or equal to light charge versus And that's it, right? And then we just move on to the next drone. Get rid of all this. Well, we typed a whole bunch of stuff here. I don't know how much of this will work. Let's try it. Int object has no attribute type. Max C dot type for C in unscanned creatures. Set of creatures minus self dot my scanned creatures. My scanned creatures should be a set of creatures. Yeah. Creatures. <gasps> okay. Creatures is not a set. And where is it? Creatures is a uh... creatures dot values. Still gonna complain about that. I don't think. I think that's just the compiler doesn't know ahead of time what what's gonna be there. So what are we doing now? This creature object has no attribute x. There's no attribute x. Furthest. Ah. Dot pause. We should probably make a dist method to uh, simplify this. We don't need to keep doing it. All right, creature. There's no attribute X. Have I done it again? Dot pause. All right, let's let's watch it in action then. So we are we know that there's 
tier 2 available. So we're heading towards the tier 2 band. Wait, 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 wait. I want to see what happened there exactly. Okay, so... So we w walk into that range and then we scan. So why are we staying still? We've already scanned it. I see there's a problem here. Every time we shouldn't be waiting if for some reason we're waiting even if we've already scanned the ones that we see. Creatures in range. If creatures in range... So... C for C in self.visible creatures. If... It's not in my scanned creatures. And... See this... So the only time we should ever be staying still Alright, let's log. I wanna see how many creatures are in range here. It should be zero. Unscanned creatures. types of scans. One is scans we've saved, the other is scans we've kind of like found. Saved. What we what the, the variable we're dealing with is saved, but we don't care about that. We care about scanned, really. Except I don't know. Um This is the variable we should be using. Okay, so the one we saved... My scanned creatures, scan count. I don't even like that term. Let's have a look at the what they called it. So this is not really... This is each scan scored. Saved scans. So I don't like this variable name. It should be my saved scan, whatever. Okay. So for now, let's ignore this one. We don't want to. We don't want to. Oh, we do need to record that though, because uh, if our drones have already saved their scans, they'll no longer be holding those scans. Is it strictly unsaved for the next one? Currently within the drone. Ah, so we need both of them. Got it. All right. So my scanned creatures equals that. I guess we want to add, add all the ones here. Okay. 
And we can worry about the distinction another time. For now. Drone scan count. So let's say scan. Scanned creatures. equals um, uh, my scanned creatures if hang on At this point, we don't know whether this drone belongs to us, or... Oh, it's a bit messy. Uh, drone ID. <sighs> okay, let's just do this. If any... D dot ID num is so it's just a quick linear search. We can find a, a cleaner way of doing this in the future. Or D and self dot my drones. No, no, no. in my drones because we've defined. I think the better way to do this is have each drone have an owner. It knows its owner might be a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so drone. Otherwise, when we find a drone, we don't know who owns it. ID num battery pause, let's say, uh, is mine. So when we create the drone, so this is mine, so this is true, this is theirs, this is false. All right, now we can clean this up. We can say scan creatures equals my scanned creatures if no, wait, because we don't have a drone. <laughs> we don't have a drone here. We have a drone ID. All right, this is, this is a bit messy. Let's just say... Is... Mine... equals any d dot is mine for d in my drones. No, no, no. This, this makes the whole is mine thing redundant now. All right, let's just do it this way. Is mine any d dot um, id num is drone id or d in my drones? My drones is defined here. Okay. 
So is mine will be true if it's mine, otherwise if we don't find it here then it's false. This is a linear time search, whatever, doesn't matter. We can get rid of the drone is mine, that's not, not important. I think we might need it in the future, but I'd, I don't want to keep keep maintaining such logic. All right. S scanned creatures equals my scanned creatures if is mine, else <sighs> enemy scanned creatures. All right. This is a, a messy thing, but let's say. All right. Scanned creatures dot add creatures creature ID. And that will do for both myself and the enemy, because we've got that or that. Okay, so that scanned creatures, my scanned creatures and enemy scanned creatures now are the union of all the ones which have been scored and all the ones being held by drones. In the future, we might want to dis to separate the two because if we want to know how many bonus points we get, we need to we want to focus on the ones that the drones are holding. But for now, we can just kind of put both of them in there. All right, let's see if that improves things. So now we should be excluding ones which we've scored or scanned before. So this is us here. Yeah, we're not stopping. Nice. And then we got those ones. Why didn't we get those ones earlier? Ah, because they collided with other fish. Interesting. Then we won, because we've got every fish on the board. So right now we're just kind of going for one big sweep. <laughs> now, I reckon we should have some logic saying if we have some bonus points available, we should head to the surface. But that's advanced logic for now. Let's uh, let's 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 submit this. This could actually win this league. Now we're not waiting around. We're actually doing. We're always doing something good. We're always making progress. I think. Like the only time we ever really wait is when there's literally no fish left to scan. So we're always going for a new scan and trying to score them. So let's see what that does. Oh, wins across the board. This is good. We're beating the boss too. I think this might might uh, pass the league. So it's pretty good. So let's have a look at this again. Um, so yeah, it doesn't matter that this is messy, we can worry about that later. Uh, so the logic here is... See. Take that out. See, this can be made a method, just say... If... Game dist from A to B with a radius R, and that, that just kind of does that. We could probably probably do that. In fact, we should just do that while we're waiting. So we want a kind of a helper method here. Define dist. So for a given entity, To another entity, whether they're drones, creatures, whatever, are, let's say, let's say, 
is within radius So A and B are either drones or creatures. Do we ever use raw pauses? I don't think so. Alright, in that case we want basically this logic. Return... So it's going to be a.pause.dist to b.pause. It's going to be less than or equal to radius squared, because we're using squared distances to keep it all inter integer. So now, every time we see this, we can just replace this with uh, if is within radius. So it's going to be drone to furthest creature. We shouldn't be using 800. It should be light. What was it? Radius. Hello, Seal. Welcome in the Wood One League. Thank you. I um I guess I am in the Wood One League. We're just waiting for that to resolve. <laughs> uh okay, so light radius is within radius. Self dot is within radius that 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 and we can replace um lambda C we want self dot within radius Drone C. Wait, no, 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 no. That one we do actually need to keep it like that. That's fine. So, is within radius was only used one time. That's fine. It still looks better. Okay. So, um, Seal, are you? I, I guess you're. You're doing this as well. Are you? What language are you using? Also, Abdullah, Abdullah, five thousand. Thank you for the follow. That was like. 14 minutes ago and I missed it, but if you're still here, thank you for the follow. Um, Python 2, nice. Um, well, if you're willing to share your username on Coding Game, I can also add you as a, a follower. So that I like to follow all my viewers as a, on the leaderboard. Actually, speaking of which, I haven't even had a look at the leaderboard yet. Let's see. I already have a bunch of people who. Oh, it pro no, that was for, that was notification from before. Are we still waiting for this to resolve? Yeah, we are. Okay. Um, it's hyphen seal hyphen. Okay. Um, I guess I can do it here. Right, we'll just follow you. You're in France. There's a this this part this site is popular in in France, isn't it? In fact, I think when it started, it was mainly used in France, and then it became more global. But it's still predominantly European, I think. Um, not many Americans know about it. It's it's growing in popularity though. Um. I, I, I guess the developers of this site are 
mostly based in France. The, the company is French. Yeah, that's true. Okay, leaderboard. Let's see. People I follow. Oh, this is going to be just... Let's do the full leaderboard. So I know Ku is an avid um, competitor in coding game. And he often does pretty well. He usually gets to gold or legend league. Uh, so we've got Seal. Oh, you're in Silver League. Oh, nice. Okay. Mensa France. Is that... Is that Mensa, as in the company that does the uh, Mensa tests? Alright, Circular17, Ashagin, Kuzapak, Murat, Tavala, Igolas, Damas, Dan. Cool. Lots of people taking part. That's not a company, but well. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, I think we've almost done all our battles. Probably gonna stop soon. It's been um, it's been a productive three hours. We got to wood one. I want to see what rank I get in Wood One, but we might, I might, probably won't continue today. Am I still the only one streaming? I thought there would be more right now. I guess today people are are busy spending time with their families and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, only the, the most hardcore programmers are still programming today. And Christmas Day was such a busy day in terms of programming. I was finishing off Advent of Code. Do you know about Advent of Code's seal? Advent of Code, the website Advent of Code? I just wait for this to resolve. Yes, but I didn't apply. Okay. Well, it's it's all archived, so you can go back and do all the past years because they it's all. I mean, the, the main event happens during December, but then it, it's just it continues for like forever. So you can go back and do archived years. There's no there's no um. Uh, there's no time pressure. It's less pressured than coding game, I think. Oh, we're rank two. Did we not quite beat the boss? I think we're just below the boss. We'll see. Let's let it finish. Oh no, it is finished. We're not above the boss. Interesting. We're rank two. I have a full challenge to do. Yeah, um, it's kind of unfortunate that they, 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 they overlap, um, but I mean, it's at least they only overlap for one week and this, this thing still has 11 days left. So Advent of Code runs from December 1 to December 25. And then this ran from like a week ago till January something or other. Um, so those of us who are crazy enough to do both means basically the entirety of December and January, <laughs> beginning of January, are occupied by coding. That's crazy. It looks like we beat most people, but then we were beaten by Kohenyan. So maybe we just have to wait for Kohenyan to get promoted. 
and then we'll stand a better chance. But um, because we, are we beating the boss? I feel like we are beating the boss. No, we're not necessarily beating the boss. It's really a toss up 50 50. Sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. So it looks like we need more. But Kohenian and UN are kind of slightly blocking our momentum. So, okay, we'll just wait a bit. Um, in the meantime, so I didn't, I didn't uh, promote yet. So, thank you for the congratulations, but it was, uh, it was um, ever so slightly hasty. Seems we uh, not quite there. Is there a small thing I can do to? Uh, it's risky now, but <laughs> no need to apologize. I thought it was a sure thing too, but I didn't want to be arrogant and uh, um, congratulate myself. <laughs> Uh, probably see the risk is if I change my logic in any way I might oh 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 okay we've got it now it's it's locked in okay we're locked in now 25 seconds to go yeah, I mean you can you can get to that point where you are just below the boss, like in second place, and you can be there for a long time. Um, like you have to be kind of stabilized above the boss, so you have to be beating the boss on average to qualify, really. And it looks like we are. All right, so you weren't hasty; <laughs> you were optimistic. Uh, you've made it to the next league. Creatures will now flee from the noise of drone engines. So this is like reverse Subnautica. If you've ever played Subnautica, if you're in your big old Cyclops submarine, creatures do not flee from the drone engines. They do the exact opposite. If you turn your engines on, they come to you. And it's actually really, really, uh... It's really rough. Um... In Subnautica, it's like you just don't want to turn your engines. You don't want to turn the bigger engines at all, because then you get those those horrible um, what are they called? The big boys in Subnautica. I don't know if this game was was kind of inspired by Subnautica. It might have been. Um, Gargantuan something or others. Levi Leviathans, that's it. Leviathans. Should we take a quick look at Leviathans? Just a... Take a... These guys are... Yeah, that, that that's a Leviathan, basically. And that's like the size of your... Ship. The, the scale of the size is amazing. Like the, you don't often see such a big scale in video games of entities versus yourself. That's really how big they are versus yourself. It's crazy. Um, I think this this coding game game might have been inspired by Subnautica because I don't know what other game. Maybe Dave the Diver, but I've never played Dave the Diver, so I don't know if that was what they were inspired by. But Subnautica, I feel, is probably up there on the list. Alright, so creatures now flee from the noise of drone engines. You now control a team of two drones. Okay, well, we were, our code was already accounting for two drones. That's fine. Ah, Wugger's here. Hello, Wugger. Yeah, um... Yeah, I, I think this game is slightly inspired by by um, Subnautica, because you scan fish, and obviously you do that in Subnautica. And in Dave the Diver, I don't think you scan, do you? I think you actually take things and sell them. Uh, I don't know. So this probably is more of a Subnautica game.
Oh, now we are doing our battles for this league, so we'll see where we end up here. It looks like we're doing reasonably well, even though we haven't accounted for the new variables. But that's because I was already accounting for having multiple drones. So... Our code is just being run independently on both drones. So the... Okay, we've got two drones. And they are both... Heading to the depths. Because that's... Um where the good stuff is. See, I don't like that they're both hiding in the same place because that's wasteful. It, ideally, we should be spreading out one drone here, one drone here. So we need some sort of... Hmm. What What is the maths behind that? It's like um, centroid covering, covering spaces. I don't know. We need some, uh... Still dying from the vid. What's this about? Have you been, um... Doing any streams recently? Oh, are you still, um... Are you still sick, Wugger? <laughs> So, uh, so one point of improvement we can make here is we can spread our drones out amongst this band. So we've only got two drones, but we can sort of write the code as if we had N drones. So if you have N drones, your optimal placement in a band would be to maximize the, well, no, you just want to basically spread them out as evenly as possible, don't you? So, it's probably just the season dark pretty much throughout the day. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's going to be the case. Um, It's getting pretty cold here in Vietnam. It's like, I'm so used to it always being hot all year round in Asia that I forget that some parts of Asia are actually cold in December, namely the north of Thailand and Da Nang here in, in, in Vietnam is also pretty cold. And nobody ever has heaters in Vietnam or Thailand, but, so you actually end up feeling cold and need to wear layers indoors, which is not something I'm used to doing in Asia, but... And there's not much sun here right now either, but... Um... Alright, need we need to make some notes here. Uh, so... Uh... Target depth equals. Alright, well, so the problem then is we can no longer give completely independent code to each drone because if we want to spread drones out, drones actually have to know where other drones are going if they want to spread themselves out. So that's going to need a different architecture. So now we can no longer give independent code to each drone. We need some sort of controller code, which is actually looking at where the drones are going and telling them to spread out or whatever. We can do that one day. Uh, let's say, tell drones to spread out horizontally. So that's one thing we can do. Uh, what else? So what is the consequence of the engines? Ah, 
Ah, interesting. So if we... Okay. How exactly does this engine stuff work? Ah, so this is the new logic here. If a drone has its motors activated within a distance of less than 1,400, that's a pretty big radius. The fish will enter frightened mode in the next turn. In this mode, the fish will start swimming in the direction opposite to the nearest drone at a speed of 400 per turn. That's bad. That means if we just... if So our current method of staying put is actually to activate the drones and compensate for gravity so that we stay in place. But that creates noise. So instead, we just want to drift. We want to turn off our engines and let ourselves drift. Ooh, this is interesting. If its coordinate becomes negative or greater than 9999, it will permanently leave the map and cannot be scanned anymore. So this is a way of attacking our opponent. If we've already scanned a fish, and we know our opponent hasn't, then we can actually purposely scare the fish off the map, so that the opponent will never be able to scan that fish. And I'm sure that's what all the, the smart players are doing already. So that's an actual aggressive move we can do. So, okay. Um, there's all kinds of... this. This. So now we're getting into the realms of finite state machines. We may want to enter the state of chase. Scan, chase. Chase will mean we're trying to actually get rid of the fish. Scan means we're trying to scan it without getting too close to it, or use the minimum amount of movement to scan it. Interesting. Um, just scan one and chase every other fish away. That won't really work because um, the amount of time it would take to scan them all, to chase them all away, our opponent will get some scans and he'll be ahead of us by one, more than one, so... I think that's a losing strategy, but um, I think once you've got a bunch of scans, that might actually be a strategy. It's a risky strategy. It's like if we know we're ahead of our opponent by a certain number of scans, then we could go into full chase mode, maybe, and try to chase all the fish off the map. But it really depends on what our opponent has versus what we have. One drone scan, one drone on a fence. The difficulty is, most of the time we don't know where any of the fish are. We can predict where they go, because we know what their AI behavior is. So if we know, last time we saw a fish, we, know, we knew where it was and where it was heading. We can predict that it will follow a path where it just bounces off the edges. That path will get interrupted though, if, if the opponent has interfered, and we haven't seen it happen. Um, so we can predict with a probability where that fish will be. So if we want to go on the offense, we need to track down that fish, and we're only guessing where he is. So it's kind of, at that point, we only have a very weak estimate of, of where he is. Because he might be at that place, but he might not be if the opponent interfered in the last in number of turns, so I think having one drone dedicated to a fence is, is a weak strategy because I think that drone is just going to spend a lot of time trying to hunt down these fish when he could be scanning. So I think in general we should mostly be scanning, but we should only, we should be maybe doing opportunist, opportunistic opportunistic chasing when we see the opportunity to come up and if it's not going to 
cost us time and effort to do so. All right, we need to make some notes here. Um, all right, one thing we definitely know is, okay, so we've said if we've scanned all the fish, And there's nothing left to scan. At that point, we should just spend all our all our efforts just chase the rest of the fish away. <laughs> um, I would say until that time comes, it's probably not worth the effort to chase because we do need to focus more on scans, but. say here we should not be going to we should not be going we should not be all right so right now our logic our logic is saying keep our engines on and keep keep going towards the middle middle of this band so I think the logic should change. Instead, we should, if we're outside of this band, we should go towards the top edge of this band. And if we're inside this band, switch the engines off and just let gravity take over. I think that's the best way to do this. That way we don't scare fish away, we just fall. something like that. So we want to say... Head to top of band. Switch off engines once within band and if we fall out of the band then we head back in something like that head back to the top it's a hysteresis i mean how wide are these bands They are 2,500 in width, and we can cover 800 one, in one turn. So either, so when we fall off the bottom of the band, if we want to go back in, either we use a hysteresis and say, okay, now I'll keep going until we're back at the top, or we use a memory memoryless approach and say, okay, just go up as high as you can in one turn, and then just drift again. Because drifting means we only drop 400 units each turn, whereas we can move 800 units in one. There's different ways you can do this. I, I don't know what's best. Um, switch off engines once within band. I don't know. That's, that's something to think about. All right, anything else? Any other work we want to create for future self? Tomorrow or in the future. Uh, so that's something we need to do about frightened. I reckon we could create a set of coordinates where we think all the fish are. based on when we last saw them and when we last saw them. So it's this, this creature's map is gonna be a history graph. It's gonna be the last known position and when we saw it. So 
from that, we can use a prediction to predict where they should be now. And that uses kind of some, some bit of bit of vector algebra, just kind of simulate the bounces of the edges of the map. Uh, it's not going to be that expensive because it's not going to bounce that many times within... What? What are the maximum amount of turns? Maximum number of turns is something like 200 turns. That's not that much. So we can simulate where it will end up in the next 200 turns. And that doesn't mean we have to do 200 steps. Because you can use vector algebra to know how long it'll take for you to collide with the wall. Just skip to that time. Change its velocity. And now, use, now apply vector algebra to find out the next point. So that's... We can pretty quickly... Okay, let's 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 write down all our ideas ideas here. So, to do. Um, creatures map keeps track of. All right, DJ. Um, have a good sleep. I'm pretty much done. Just make this note, and I'm gonna end the stream. That's been. Just under four hours. That's, I think that's a reasonable session for today. I think later on... I think I want to do some more Minecraft adventure maps. Seems it's like a nice, fun holiday activity to do. Don't really feel like playing Doom or Fire Emblem or what, these other campaign modes that I'm, I've been playing hardcore so far. Um... Doom with Christmas textures was pretty funny, though. <laughs> all the imps were wearing Santa hats, and all the caco demons were Christmas decorations, like the, the balls, the ball balls that hang from the tree. Right. Um... Creatures map keeps track of last... Duke Nukem 3D Nuclear Winter would be fitting. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of what kind of games are rooted in Christmas theme, but there's not really many that I wanted to do. There's like... Um... I can't even think. What, what, what are Christmassy games? Die Hard is one, of course, but I didn't want to add any more campaign games to my list because I got like two or three going, so the best I could think of really that's easy to start up is Minecraft because you can find lots of simple simple maps. In fact, I'm not even going to bother looking for Christmas maps. We'll just look for any Minecraft adventure maps because they're usually like one shots which last one or two hours. Do creatures map keeps track of last known position can use vector algebra to predict expected position. So if the last known position we know was so and so wait does their velocity oh so they they go to max 400 velocity when they're scared well the best we can do is just assume they don't get scared because if we saw them getting scared we'll have updated their map the creatures map anyway so if we haven't seen them in the last 20 turns or so we just have to assume nobody scared them because if if somebody scared them, we can't we can't predict what happened there. That's unpredictable. Uh, so if we assume they didn't get scared in the last n number of turns, we can actually make a prediction for where they are now. That's going to make it very interesting because now 
um, instead of going to a certain fixed location, we can actually look at the predictions of all the fish's locations and create a centroid of them, which is like the point which kind of is, is in the center of them all. Um, it's like the average spot and head to that point. So if I predict that they're all going to be towards the right, there's no point heading, heading to the middle. We can actually head to the centroid of the predicted spots. Just going to make a note of that as well. Head to centroid of predicted spots. Because this means every fish, unscanned fish, has a predicted spot. There's never, it's never invalid. We can always have a pr prediction where it is. If we've never seen that fish before ever, then we can just predict that it's in the dead center, I suppose. Yeah. So get prediction. Let's say get prediction. We've already we've already got a comment, kind of describing that. All right, what else? I think we've written down all the great ideas we need to do. That that will take up our whole stream, I think, next time. This idea of aggressive scaring, I think it's one of those things that's a very advanced strategy, but you don't want to do early because. It's risky. It might harm you. Uh, you might waste time trying to scare a fish instead of doing scans. So I think focus on scanning, but switch off our engines when when we can't find any fish, because then we sh then we don't want to scare any fish off. So but for the most part, I'm not worried about what my my opponent is doing. We'll just focus on our own activity independently. Um, just try to get those scans. Oh, another thing we can do is... Almost got that mosquito. He's long gone. There he is in my kitchen. He'll be back. Um, If if we have potential bonus points for being the first to collect a set of scans, because there's all these bonus points you get. You get one point for the scan, but you get double if you were the first one to scan it. And similarly, if you get all of one color, you get bonus points. If you get all of one type, you get bonus points. All right, if we have potential bonus points and it exceeds a certain threshold, because for example, if we've just found one squid, okay, we'll get one more point, but at some point, if it's not many points, we might just want to hang around and try and collect more scans. So there's a, there's a certain threshold exceeding a threshold. Then we will probably want to head to surface to cash in on those bonus points. And we want to go vertically up, minimize the time it takes to get to the surface. And we don't want to go to zero zero, do we? What, how do you do? You need to be at the at the zero zero surface, near the surface. Five hundred units. The scans will be automatically saved. So actually, I should change this this zero to five hundred. Head to surface. This should be five hundred. Because if we go to zero. Just wasted, wasted effort, isn't it? Go to 500.
Okay, so this is quite wasteful, yeah, because we're just hanging around, not doing anything while the uh, the boss is actually kind of actively searching. We do need to keep moving about. The thing is, the boss is scaring all the fish away. Look, they're all scared of the boss. But it doesn't matter so much because he's still making so much progress by moving about because you move faster than the fish. So yeah, we probably don't need to be paranoid. We don't need to be pessimistic about this this fish frightening. We can sort of don't worry too much about frightening them. Just keep it in the in mind that they will be frightened. But it's we shouldn't let that make us afraid to. All right. So also the other thing is wait. Here we should actually use the actual wait command. So we should say define wait. Um, self dot orders run equals wait. Uh, it equals false. This one we don't want to do really. Take this one out. So now when we wait, we actually turn off the engines. Let's see if that let's see what that looks like. So whenever we wait, where have we waited? Here. So we're kind of drifting down. Interesting. I mean, it's still not very good because we're not we're not moving about, but I think this is better because now okay, so if we're within Ah, here we don't want to turn off our engines. I would actually rather move dot move move to my own position that's different from waiting waiting means switch off the engines and let gravity take over here i want to keep keep stay in the same place which actually costs engine so we'll do that because um we're trying to keep this fish within our sight. Uh, similarly, here. Alright, and this one is okay. But when we wait down here. Alright, target depth equals. All right, so here, instead of doing this, we want to say... All right. Okay, these are the bounds. If... Um... D1, so if we if we are within the bounds, drone dot pause dot y is less or equal to b2, then let's just just wait, turn off the engines. Um, and 
yeah, turn on the turn on the um, turn on the lights if, if we have charge to do so. If we're not within the bounds, then I would say we want to target depth equals B1. We actually want to go to the top, aim for the top, not the middle, and then just let gravity dr drift us down. That's the better way to do it, I think. Width over to target depth. Yeah, do that. Not sure if I want to do that. We'll, we'll make it a maybe. Never is not iterable. What? Target depth. Whoop! No, 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 no. This one should be type bands. Yeah, that's fine. Tight bands. Oh, I'm hungry. I bought a fish. I think I'm eating fish today. Very appropriate. It's been talking about fish. What is the type of fish I bought? Let's have a look at it. Vietnamese. I don't know what that is. Any fish experts? Huh. Well, whatever. Run this code, let's see if it's actually any better. Oh no, it's error, error, error. Wait, false. Whoops, 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 whoops. Int. Int light. It's supposed to be a zero or one, but variable. Still error. Wait zero? Why Why are you waiting at zero? That's wrong. No, 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 that's, that's fine, that's fine. See, that's the problem. We are waiting on a hysteresis, so we remain at the bottom. Uh, hysteresis means... It's like a thermostat. So a thermostat, when you... When it reaches... Okay, when it gets too cold and your thermostat wants to turn the heater on, let's say at 21 degrees or whatever, it doesn't just turn it on and then as soon as you're above 21 degrees, it turns it off again. That'll be really bad for the electricals if you're just turning the, the heat on and off and on and off all the time at, when you're around 21. So it turns it on hysteresis. So it then turns it on and waits until you're to the high threshold and then turns it off again, which means we need to implement, implement memory. We need to say, okay, when we've reached the bottom of the band, we want to switch the engines on, and we might as well keep them on until we get to the top of the band as well, because, okay, we've started frightening the fish, it doesn't really matter if we frighten them a bit more. So we want to use a hysteresis to say, we now want to keep the engines on until... That means we need to store states, which we have not done at any point so far. So we need to implement memory storage. 
that's a whole different thing. I suppose it's fine. Um, for now, should I just submit this? It might actually, my score might actually go down because I'm waiting at the bottom, which is not great, but whatever. Am I at least turning my lights on every now and then? I'm not. How much battery do I have? 30! Why am I not using my battery? Hang on, that's a mistake. Self.weight drone.battery is greater or equal to light charge. Light charge is 5. It should be turning the light on, shouldn't it? Why is it weight zero? If we are within the bounds, weight. Oh, wow, that's what is going on here. That should be weight drone. I don't even know what that means. Do that. Okay. Try that again then. So I think every drone was getting invalid orders, so it just waited. Now it should be waiting and switch on the lights whenever you, you have the chance. There we go, see? You have a better chance of scanning, but it's still it's as good as it gets. Alright, that's that's decent. We'll just submit that. Um, and then I think I'll stop the stream there. Uh, we don't want to hang around for too long. That's been four, just coming up to almost exactly four hours. Almost exactly the four hour mark. Um, I can just see what happens. Oh, we've got some wins at least. Oh, no, okay. Wins. Losses and wins. That's a good sign. So we've got a lot to do next time. We've got 11 days to do this. Three nine six, yeah, whatever. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna take a while, for, while for this to execute. I think. Um, we shouldn't worry about it because I'll just, I'll just get tempted to try and fix any issues that come up. As long as it's not crashing, we can check a couple, couple of past games just to see what happened. Let's try them out. We haven't actually seen how we fare against other people. Let's see what it looks like. So any, hello any. So any is actually, see look, they're actually hunting down fish. That's what we should be doing. We're just plopping down to the bottom. Yeah, that's going to be a big part of this. Hunting down fish based on where we think they are. That's a huge part of this and a room, room for lots of smart algorithms. Uh, that's where the, the big AI factor comes in. See, any is probably not even doing any aggressive moves. They're probably just trying to find the fish they want and... Oh look, they're actually scaring the fish off. That is aggressive. But we already scanned that one, so... But we didn't scan the other one, so... And we don't even know that it's gone off the map? Interesting. So if you did one sweep from the right to the left, you could probably pretty much work out whether you covered all the fish or not, so... It's possible that the enemy scared a fish off the side of the map, and we we, we don't know because we haven't seen it, so... We could be waiting here forever, because we're waiting to see that fish, but it will never come, so that's a problem. So... I should make a note of that as well. Uh, uh, do 
don't wait forever. The fish we are waiting for may have left the map. So we need some sort of give up time. I don't know. We'll figure this out. Alright, that's plenty to... Oh, that's... I mean, that's a decent rank, considering we're just sitting on the bottom of the seabed. <laughs> Alright. That's enough. Am I still the only one streaming, really? That's surprising. Normally there's about three or four, at least. I guess it's not a time... Not a time that many, uh... I mean, it's... It's coming up to afternoon in Europe. What time is it in the US? US is early morning, but it's mainly Europeans, isn't it? That use coding game? I don't know. Okay. Um... I think that's enough for today. I... So I guess if nobody's streaming coding game according to this thing then we can't really raid. I mean I could try searching on Twitch, but I, if someone's streaming coding game, the algorithm's supposed to the uh, API is supposed to pick them up anyway, but Yeah, it looks like it's just me. Surprises me. No, nobody's even doing clash of code or anything like that. Bah. People busy spending time with their families and stuff like that. All right, their loss. <laughs> okay, I I really want to eat that fish that's in my fridge right now. So. I'm trying to decide, am I going to fry it or am I going to boil it? I think I'll boil it. I'm trying to be at least a little, little bit more healthy. All right. Thanks for watching. See you. Do I want to do this tomorrow? I don't think so. Maybe the day after tomorrow. Stay on. Okay, I need to save the code. Just run that to save the code. There we go. I'm, I'm thinking, hmm. So I, I have a workshop coming up where I'm going to be teaching AI for five days at university. I was going to give them, and I'm going to run a competition for them to do. I was going to give them the Bomberman one from over 10 years ago or something because I always do that for the, the workshop. I'm thinking I might give them this one instead. Because the reason I always go for the Bomberman one is because it's kind of really simplistic and easy to describe, and it's basic pathfinding, like send your Bomberman to so-and-so coordinates. I reckon I might do this one instead of Bomberman, because um, it's also really simplistic, and you can also pretty easily easily get off the ground with a basic code algorithm the only other, the only thing you have to worry about is drifting if you're waiting then you fall but i mean that's you don't have to worry too much about that so it's yeah i might actually switch from using the bomber man one to to this one and it'll be up to date so that'll be nice Because it will finish if my workshop is in mid-January. This tournament will actually finish by then. Oh, but they might not release. There's usually a lag time after the tournament ends before they actually release it as a archived multi-bot tournament. A, 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 a multi-tournament with no deadline. So it depends whether they actually release it or not. Okay, oh, I don't know. I have to think about that. All right. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.